Before we do roll call this morning, I know Steve uh, has an announcement he wants to make, and I thought it would be better that you make the announcement before we start than during your report. Sure, thank you very much. Uh, to my left is our Sally Hanat from our office. Many of you may know our Sally, who has done great budget work this year uh, and does back office support for us. Um, Marcelli has recently been promoted to the role of the Federation's uh, administrative assistant, so that is why she is here. She will be doing roll calls <laughs> and all the necessary work for the Federation. So congratulations, Marcelli. Thank you. So as your first official duty, uh, I will turn it over to you and Sue to do roll call. Okay. Acadia two, absent. Acadia two. Andover A, absent. Andover B, present by proxy. Andover E, absent. Andover Age, absent. Andover I, present by proxy. Andover A, I'm sorry, Bedford A, absent. Bedford B, absent. Bedford C, absent. Bedford D, absent. Bedford E, present by proxy. Bedford F, present by proxy. Bedford H, absent. Bedford J, absent. Brookfield, present by proxy. Cambridge C, absent. Cambridge E, absent. Cambridge F, absent. Cambridge H, absent. Cambridge I, absent. Cambridge J, absent. Cambridge K, present by proxy. Cambridge L, absent. Cambridge M, present by proxy. Canton Court, absent. Devonshire, absent. Oh, sorry, she's next to me. <laughs> she's present. <laughs> <laughs> Dorchester A, present by proxy. Dorchester B, present by proxy. Dorchester D, absent. Fairfield A, present by proxy. Fairfield B, absent. Fairfield C, present by proxy. Fairfield F, absent. Fairfield G, present by proxy. Fairfield H, present by proxy. Gloucester A, Present by proxy. Gloucester B, present by proxy. Gloucester C, present by proxy. Gloucester D, present by proxy. Gloucester G, absent. 
Gloucester K, absent. Gloucester M, present by proxy. Grantham, absent. Highgate A, present by proxy. Highgate B, present by proxy. Highgate D, absent. Oh, all right. Highgate D, Highgate D, yeah. What's your name? Minty. Okay, got it? Okay. Highgate E, absent. Highgate F, absent. Highgate 3, absent. Highgate 4, present by proxy. Huntington, absent. Idlewood, absent. Inverness, present by proxy. Knowles 1, present by proxy. Knowles 2, present by proxy. Knowles 3, absent. Lancaster 2, present by proxy. Lancaster 3, present by proxy. Lancaster 4, absent. Lynnhurst, absent. Manchester 1, absent. Manchester 3, Absent, Nantucket 1, present by proxy, Nantucket 3, absent, Oxford 1, absent, Quail Pass, absent, Radisson 1, present by proxy. Radisson 2, present by proxy. Richmond, present by proxy. Somerset, absent. Southampton 1, absent. Southampton 2, present by proxy. Tremont 1, present by proxy. Three mod two, present by proxy. Billeroy absent. Yorkshire absent. Okay, Mr. President, you have seventy-two association represented, with three thousand six hundred and sixty-one, with sixty-six point three percent unit represented. You have a quorum. Thank you, and at 9.41, I call, we'll call the meeting to order, and please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You can spread out now a little, Arcelli, and uh, welcome on board. Uh, we look forward to having you and working with you. Uh, I know taking roll call is probably one of the most challenging things. Uh, Keith couldn't get it right, and Steve had a little stumbling, so don't worry, you'll learn, and if you make a mistake, don't worry about it. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the approval of the November 9th minutes. And I will accept a motion to approve those minutes. Thank you. Second. Dan, I will take yours in a second. Mr. Hector. 
as all the proxies that have been submitted uh, are yes votes for approval, uh, is there any discussion or are there any no votes from those present on approval of those minutes? With no no votes from the members present, I will uh, accept the minutes as approved unanimously by all present and in proxy. The second is the approval of the November 18th membership meeting, and I will entertain a motion to approve those. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Uh, as all of the proxies are uh, yes votes, is there any objection to approval or discussion on those minutes from those present? Without any objection, I will also consider those minutes approved unanimously by those in proxy and present. Next item on the agenda is the management report and I'm going to have Steve go first because I know uh, Ginger has a special thing for us coming this morning. Uh, so Steve, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everyone. And uh, I wish everyone on behalf of First Service happy holidays coming up, tis the season. Um, I will begin with landscaping the work order volume for November. Um, reporting on last month was relatively low, um, and, and I believe a reason for that was we did end up having that Hurricane Nicole uh, for, I think it was the first week, so there wasn't a lot of work orders placed because of the debris cleanup from Hurricane Nicole. Uh, bulk mulch, we're done. It's been delivered and installed. I uh, can't thank Joey enough and all the POCs from the associations this year for coming together and having a uh, very successful installation of bulk mulch. Um, I am pleased to announce that we have hired a second landscape specialist to start January 1st. His name is Jonathan Newman, who resides in Sun City Center, and he is currently the property manager for the Tampa YMCA in charge of maintaining all sports fields and facility landscaping. Prior to that, he was an irrigation foreman for nearly 10 years. Mr. Newman has a Bachelor of Science degree in Turf Grass Science from Penn State University. I knew we'd get one of those at least. Uh, and I will be introducing him to you all at next month's meeting. Uh, administratively, our CAMS and management staff, we've had direct communication with nearly every association within the past 30 days. Uh, frequent topics, I think we all know, have been budgets, of course, upcoming annual meetings um, and elections. And we've been dealing with some altera a lot of alterations, uh, forms, property, and resident issues with a wide range of complexity. Uh, most budget revisions have been made, and I are on behalf of the office, we extend a huge thank you to all the treasurers out there and boards for the diligent efforts in budget prep this year. Association annual meeting first notices have all gone out. Second notices with budgets and election material where necessary will hit the mail uh, starting next week for the early January meetings. And that is my report to the membership. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions? Seeing none, I will turn the meeting over to Vesta for a report on the land trust. Ginger? Good morning. Happy holidays. I like your hat. <laughs> He's got the colors going there. All right, we'll get right to it here. Uh, your fitness usage for November, uh, we were a little bit decrease over the prior month there, not much, still very good attendance. We had uh, just shy of 850 people use the water classes and uh, just 2384 on land group, uh, which is the fitness classes. Um, that we teach in in the 2020 studio over there. We've got spa and salon usage for November. You can see here just shy of $25,000. You'll see that number. Oops, this keeps going out. Sorry. You, you good? You hear it? 
Okay. Um, ratchet up during the holidays, and then certainly in the first quarter, they start hopping and bopping. In our food and beverage usage for November, we had 7,554 patrons served, still about 10% of those using Portico Pickup with a very healthy and robust sales for November, 158,768. In our projects, the Nantucket Pool Deck and Cabana Paint Project is underway. This is estimated to complete in about two weeks. We've had a little bit of uh, rain here and there, but weather permitting, that should, should be uneventful. The main clubhouse and South Club pools are available for use during this renovation work down there. The South Club Pool Deck expansion project continues. Uh, we, we gave the good news of getting the permit finally after a year, and now the underground plumbing has passed the first inspection. The installation of the new footers, the electrical, the concrete flooring, and the block walls has begun. What we call phase 1.5, uh, the ground preparation for the installation of the new concrete continues. We got a little bit of a delay from the fire marshals, a request to make some minor changes to the location of the conduits uh, that will lead up to the RFID gates that lead into the pool area. The new concrete in the area in front of the new bar and surrounding areas will be installed this month. Moving on to phase two, the shade structures, appliances, pool furniture replacement, the landscaping and the sound system components have been approved and are in process. And then finally, we've got a new project here. This is in your budgeted plan. The main and west parking lots at the South Club uh, will be re uh, seal coated and, and re uh, one of them's being sealed. Well, let me just read it here. We've got phase one, <laughs> the west parking lot. The seal coat and striping portion is estimated to take two days. Seal coating will start on December 21st and striping will begin on December 22nd. The west parking lot will be closed during this phase, but the main lot will be uh, available and the south club is fully accessible. Phase two is going into the main parking lot. That's where we'll have milling and paving portion, and that's estimated to take three days. Milling will start on January 9th, and paving will begin on the 10th. The main parking lot will, of course, be closed during that portion, and the south club will still remain open and accessible from the west lot, so it'll be a little bit flipsy flopsy, but we'll be able to get the whole thing done. And you'll just, um, if, if you get, you know, not sure what the dates are, they'll have maps available and you can see which is closed when. On the main clubhouse here, the renovation project continues. The section surrounding Cafe La Perque has been completed and La Perque has reopened. Hopefully you all are out there and uh, can enjoy the new uh, concept. The food's been wonderful. Work in the next section of the Northwest Hallway has begun and is estimated to be completed by the end of December. Following completion of that area, work will begin in the section that includes the area in front of the second set of doors uh, to Fiber Arts, the studio, and the Northwest entrance to the women's locker room down by the indoor pool area. The main clubhouse furnish, furniture that had reached its useful life and was not able to be recovered or repurposed in any way, was do donated to FEMA, uh, Hurricane Ian and Nicole disaster relief efforts, and we appreciate th the board's support on that and the communities that was uh, well needed, and they've sent us a letter thanking for, for, for that consideration for them. On uh, special events, your winter series, 13 of the 14 shows have sold out. I think there's only about uh, 20 or so in the last show. Um, just so you all know, in my history here, that sellout has only happened one time. So this is a phenomenal year. And congratulations to uh, Scott and the team for, for those selections and, and getting that the word out there and the popularity of those. They've added the three pop-up shows. You can see them on the screen. Of course, they'll be in the pointer and, and in the e-blast, uh, but those will coming up March through April. And here's a couple more special events, notable items at the South Club. We've got a holiday buffet on December 23rd, and each of those Saturdays noted there at, at, um, in January will have poolside uh, entertainment and then also one on January 25th. 
And then uh, due to the popularity of the Thanksgiving dinner and the positive feedback, we're looking forward to hosting numerous additional opportunities like Easter brunch and Mother's Day. So look forward to some of that coming up here in the spring. Uh, and tonight, after a very popular first outdoor dive-in streaming concert, uh, the team will be hosting Journey's Live in Manila concert from 2009. Um, not quite sure of the time on that, but, but if you're interested, stop by and hear that some great music. As a reminder, breakfast is served at the South Club from 8 to 11, Thursday through Sundays. And, with, and we were, want to just thank all who volunteered, assisted, uh, and participated in the community-wide uh, event, the celebration of the holidays. It was a tremendous success, and I know the, uh, the boards and the whole community come together for, for that, and it was very well run. So uh, just our thanks to all the residents who came out and supported that event. Watch for new programming, including the outdoor concert uh, tribute to Woodstock, and then uh, also just the note that Kings Point Catering is now available if you need any catering moving forward for your association meetings or any of your parties. And then, of course, we still have our ongoing services, Jen's Market, the Physician Stat Lab, Podiatry, and Delivered Rx, uh, continuing with COVID shots, vaccines, and boosters. And on stop, uh, Spot Dermatology reported that the numbers have been remarkable. 400 residents have been seen, 10 precancerous cases discovered, 43 skin cancers, and three cases of melanoma. All these patients have been taken care of and provided the treatments they needed. Melanoma is the rarest and most dangerous form of skin cancer, as most of you know. To say that the Kings Point program has saved at least three lives is no exaggeration. Thank you for bringing OnSpot to your community. Your efforts to host and promote our services are appreciated. This is a, a quote from the organization. So uh, these things are very important for people who aren't getting out and getting other screenings and services. They're right here in the comfort of your own community. So um, that, just, that just makes us even more confident that it's the right thing to do and we're going in the right direction with the wellness programming here. Your transportation numbers during November. And in security, uh, we had obviously the highest call volume on Thanksgiving Day with 387 calls and 14,012 passes issued in the month. As far as incident report, ooh, what's going on there? Hey, hello. Incident reports, okay. We had a, a resident call the front gate to inform security there was a person lying face down on the ground near one of the ponds. Upon arrival, security again verified the person had also called 911 and posted an officer at the roadway to help emergency. Within minutes, the ambulance arrived and, and got this uh, person over to the hospital. And during the opening uh, of the back gate, security noticed two packages for delivery had just been thrown over the gate. Uh, they, unless the driver was in a hurry, I, I assume. Uh, security looked up the resident information by address and informed the residents there was a package at the gate addressed to them. And after verifying the residents and their ordering information, they did receive their packages, hopefully, in one piece. Yet another incident of knocking down the golf cart gate has occurred. Uh, there's, this is actually a two-part story here. So this is one incident. The bicyclists involved attempted to outrun the security truck who followed them uh, and verified uh, that there were no injuries. This was a piggybacking through the gate. Um, although the, we think the bicyclist was somewhat embarrassed that security actually hunted him down, uh, he was otherwise fine. And it, bear with me, I've got to actually close this screen to go to the next one I want to show you. You can't make this stuff up, folks. You want to see that again? So we put this gate up. Oh, it's not on there. My bell. What do we do? Hmm? All right. Wait, this is worth it. Hold on. 
close it, the whole thing. Steve, Alan. My bell, come down and help her. <laughs> yeah, really. You don't. There we go. All right. Thank you. Technical difficulty. All right. So we put the gate up, what, 10 years ago? You got to go back to the beginning. I am getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> I know. Hold on. So. You know how many times that we have, I only have so many hands here, Steve. You're going to have to help out. So how many times we have, uh, not only one gate, one arm went down, but he took out the exit arm as well. Want to see it again? It's kind of fun. We've, we've watched it. How many times, Matt? So. No identifying marks on the vehicle except for that case of uh, light beer in the back. If anybody knows the, the golf cart owner, if you would let us know, uh, let Matthew know, because we'll be sending uh, them a bill, because that did damage both arms. And there was n no hesitation, nothing. It just blew right through there. So um, we see this a lot, but we thought we would show you that Ten years. This is this isn't a hard system. You just gotta pause, scan your badge. If you don't have one, buzz the the guard, and it's frustrating for us. So anyway, we we, we make light of it, but it is is something that we we try to thwart. Let's put it that way. And I'm just gonna add to your video that. Every incident that occurs like that costs this residents, this community, money to repair that gate. Uh, it wasn't, as Ginger said, it wasn't just one arm, it was both arms uh, that were destroyed. And if you notice, the guy didn't even stop. He just right. went straight on through. And I don't know, but Ginger could probably give us a average of the cost to replace those arms and the mechanisms for we'll, we'll find out. Um, if, if it just knocks it off, those little breakaway, um, you know, the little bolts, the little nuts, that's that's not a lot. But when they do that kind of damage, it's, it'll probably be hundreds of dollars. So you got to get the technician out here and reinstall and all that. But finally, just happy holidays from everyone at Vesta. It has been a whirlwind year. Uh, may the melody and spirit of the season fill all your homes throughout the new year. and. Good health to all of you. Happy holidays. Any questions, comments for Ginger? It's going up. Matthew? Okay, it'll be an e-blast. Uh, we don't want a lynch mob or anything. We just want to, you know, identify the, the perpetrator so he can, um, he, she, we can't even tell, can take care of it. So. You said you don't want a lynch mob. Uh, Mr. G Mr. Gundry wants to have uh, the lynching in the portico of the North Club, and he wants to sell tickets to it to raise money. Is that correct, Jim? With that, we will move to committee reports, and I'm going to start way down on my far left because uh, Dan has some hopefully good news to report uh, when we get to Spectrum and to the RFP for the property management company. Yes, uh, well, we have two items, actually, the first being the request for proposals for the property management company. Those requests... Uh, those proposals are due today at 4 o'clock. We will open them on Monday and begin deliberation. When a company is chosen, then we will go into negotiation for the contract, and hopefully that will be finished in a quick manner. Uh, the second item is the Spectrum contract. Um, the committee 
has agreed in principle with uh, Spectrum, and those documents are being uh, cleaned up and polished. Um, the proposal will be presented to the Federation Board of Directors on the 6th of January, and assuming that the board accepts the proposal, the proposal will be presented to the membership on the 20th of January. That's all I have now. And the presentation will be done by Spectrum themselves, am I correct? Yeah, that's the plan, yes. So if, if you want to get a pre-advanced uh, look at what the Spectrum contract contains and the uh, new variables in it, uh, please plan on attending. And, and if we need to, we have enough residents that want to get the advance notice. Uh, we may be able to move the meeting out of the card room uh, into the theater. I haven't even discussed it with Vest if the theater is available that day. But uh, there are some si exciting parts to that uh, contract. Uh, one is a reduction in your monthly cost, uh, which should make everybody happy. Uh, there, there are a number of things that will impact the community greatly. Uh, you will see your spectrum bills going uh, down one, and Dan, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that uh, the DVR boxes that are you currently pay for, uh, that you will get one free DVR box. Am I correct, Dan? That's part of the... Yes. Um, this remains two connections. One of them will DVR. Uh, and the DVR box will either be a choice of uh, recording three on site or recording uh, an infinite number to the cloud. So there, there are some, you know, reductions within that. Uh, right now you pay about $44 per month uh, plus uh, surcharges and stuff. That rate is going down uh, to $40 or approximate. And I'm not going to try and steal Spectrum's thun thunder. It's only uh, was given to us. Uh, months ago before we started getting into contract negotiations. Uh, but with that and the lowering of the cost and not having to pay for a DVR box and the new speeds and services that they will be offering and the upgrades within the community they will be doing, I think the residents will be rather pleased uh, to see what Spectrum has come back with to us, I know it was a long, arduous process, and it was a long, arduous process in doing the contract. So uh, I know Dan uh, speaks for the entire committee of which he is chair. It has been a long, arduous process between working with our council, working with First Service, and working with the board and the committee in getting that contract done. So Dan, uh, we look forward to January 6th, and we look forward to getting that contract approved and, and move forward with it. Randy, you have anything? Ray, do you have anything? Starting in January, the evaluation of the uh, entire facility, as far as the associations are concerned, will start to determine our value uh, so that the insurance company can determine what kind of rate we will get based off of value. So that will start in January. Other than that, there's really not much occurring in the ins area of insurance right now. You may be aware that the state was in session this week and passed uh, some laws uh, that at least from what I read, if they are effective at all, will not have much bearing on pricing for 18 to 24 months. Uh, that's about all I can tell you right now. So I know you're, you've been busy doing minutes and stuff, so I will let you go. Tom, do you have anything on the landscaping committee? Jim? You're going to defer to me? <laughs> I'm not doing your treasurer's report. <laughs> I told Jim because uh, 
there are a few people on this board that I want to thank and also provide some information to the community. Uh, as you know, Sue Martucci uh, heads up a tree and wreath decorating uh, silent auction uh, that is participated by many organizations, uh, many associations, and many clubs within Kings Point. Uh, Sue picked this year the My Warriors Place out of Ruskin to receive the donations. Uh, it is with great pleasure and a great thanks of, to the community that through Sue's efforts, uh, the tree and wreath raised $5,380. So thank you, Sue. My second announcement, it goes to not only our vendors, uh, not only to the residents of Kings Point who should feel uh, a great deal of gratitude for what they have done, but I'd also like to thank uh, Jim Gundry, who represented the Federation in the community effort and the work he did on it. Uh, I do know that the master earlier this week uh, made an announcement for those who weren't there. The raffle, uh, along with the silent auction for Gasparilla Inn and some cash donations raised for the Mary Ann Martha House, $17,292. And as you are applauding, you're applauding yourself because this was the residents of Kings Point who turned out in massive numbers uh, to buy raffle tickets and participate in it. Uh, we raised more this year uh, than we did last year. And last year, the tree and wreath portion uh, went to the Mary Ann Martha House. Uh, if we look, the community basically for the holiday celebration raised over $22,500 out of this community. So uh, when you see your vendors, they all contributed. Uh, when you see your neighbors or you, you get up in the morning and look in the mirror, know that you basically uh, succeeded in a worthwhile effort to provide for those less fortunate. So thank you. Uh, with that, that ends my report. Uh, I will open it to the floor for any questions, comments, concerns, good and welfare. Dan, I was worried you weren't here. <laughs> The handicapped chair at the indoor pool is not working. The power, the guards have shown them how to activate and deactivate it. That should be, there's a, a knob on the water pipe to turn it off and on. That should be turned off in the evening and turned on because the continuous pressure on that wears out the hoses, okay? So, and several times when the lights are on for an emergency in the sauna, the, the security guards are not told how to reset those lights. I've shown them where the box is. That should be part of the training for every security guard here. 
I happened to be there, and I asked the security guards if they know how to do these things. And three or four of them that I've talked to have no clue what to do. Any other comments, questions, concerns? Then, what? Yes, Sue, you can, <laughs> you're not prohibited from speaking. No, I just thought it was. I'd like to personally thank the security team that was at the clubhouse for the Trees and Wreaths Festival for the start, because they did a tremendous amount of work um, placing all the items that were brought in and hooking everything up so there was electricity and you know, the lights could go on. So I want to thank Ken and his team for your efforts that weekend and all through. Thank you. And <laughs> Sue, I want to I want to add to that because I was remiss uh, in the announcement because the amount of money we raised is so great, uh, but we owe a great deal of thanks. Uh, both to Vesta and First Service, who gave of their time. Uh, if any of you were up here that evening, uh, the this room was basically packed with people eating, uh, which was all prepared at the South Club and brought up. Uh, the raffle room was packed. Security was around. Uh, Scott and a number of people from Vesta in First Service were selling raffle tickets. They gave of their time and effort uh, to this community to make this a success. And we owe a great deal of gratitude to both of our management companies for the effort that they put in in making this holiday celebration uh, as great and as wonderful as it turned out to be. It just doesn't happen and get set up automatically. There's a lot of hours that are put in and in setting up and make sure that it runs smoothly within the clubhouses and stuff. And uh, I think the community owes a great deal of gratitude to Ginger and Matt and her, their entire staff and to Steve and his staff for the work that they put out. And with that, to wish each and every one of you a very happy holiday and a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Any objection? The meeting is adjourned.